Let's see if the fonts showed up. I think they did. It looks nice. <laughs> hey, um, welcome everyone, uh, and welcome anyone on the internet around the world. I see tweets all over of people like, you know, in bed in the middle of the night, kids asleep, Blender conference on their screen in front, which is pretty cool. Um, let's give it a second for the slides to begin. And I'll start. Uh, all right, looks like it's going. So I, uh, my name is Patrick Osborne. I am a uh, writer and a director and an animator. And um, I've been uh, in this industry, in the feature animation and visual effects industry since about 2003, so 19 years, which is crazy to me. Uh, I've had the opportunity really to work on a lot of pretty amazing projects. Um, you know, I came out of school, landed uh, at, at Sony Imageworks for a couple years and got kind of a crash course in all kinds of uh, sections of the animation world, including doing uh, mocap cleanup and keyframe animation. And then um, right around the uh, Disney transition to the, uh, you know, kind of the, the Pixar leadership coming in uh, there for Bolt and Tangled, and that really felt like this kind of revolutionary spot uh, where 2D was kind of shifting into 3D and teams were merging. And uh, I weirdly think we're about to hit another one of those with the AI tools, but um, that's another talk probably. Uh, so, and then uh, during Tangled, I got to work next to um, John Cars and Clay Cadis and Glenn Keane, uh, who would draw over all of our shots as we animated, which was pretty darn amazing. And it also, got me kind of in love with the, the drawn line and uh, started me uh, on this path that I think is still continuing today of working directly with software developers and artists and trying to make tools to make things that uh, we want to see out in the world instead of just accepting tools as they were. So I got to work on a short called Paper Man as the animation director and spent two years uh, working with one software developer to make Meander this drawing tool um, that let us do Paper Man, and Grease Pencil is the closest thing that it, to Meander that has ever existed. And Meander has been kind of put into some of Disney and Pixar's story tools, but other than that, it hasn't really been used much. Um, but my career in particular took off and really changed uh, tack when I got to uh, direct and write my own uh, film Feast. Uh, so everything kind of shifted for me there when I realized that, you know, if I was gonna do anything interesting, I could wait in line, you know, to develop at Disney Animation for like 10 years, hope the bosses don't change or quit and, and try to make stuff on my own. So I left and became an independent director. And, um, you know, it's a little bit weird of a, it's not really even a job, it's a, it's a, uh, a vocation kind of, it feels like a calling a little bit because I'm kind of doing all kinds of different things on any particular day, but really it's about shaping a vision, like getting everybody on a team together and keeping that team morale excited, being this cheerleader. Uh, you get a lot of credit for doing this, but you also get a lot of blame when things go down in flames and, and that happens. And, um, and also you realize really quickly that you can't really do anything in the animation world alone, which is like super exciting, but also um, you, know, you need to be this team player and collaborator to make it really work. Um, and I, there's a couple of different types of work that I do. Uh, there's uh, the idea of doing branded content and existing IP and original ideas. And there's actually a fourth one that I'll get to in a second that's kind of a recent discovery for me. But with branded content and um, intellectual property, this is like you know commercials, uh, films and TV based on books. Uh, sometimes corporate funded films and existing scripts that come from other writers, things that I didn't come up with in the first place. Um, basically, it's stuff that someone else comes to me and asks to make. And then there's the other side, which is original content, which is uh, me trying to will these ideas that I dream up with uh, into existence. Um, and this also kind of includes like maybe a book that I read that I don't own the rights to that I need to come up with a, a take and Basically, I'm the one who's trying to force this thing into existence. And, you know, this is a lot harder than making IP, than some of people, than people already having the, the energy. You're like starting to push the car up the hill versus like it already kind of rolling in the other one. So, uh, 
a little bit of a, a recap of that. So, you know, I take on this existing thing, pitch my take back. Usually you're competing against other people, which is a little bit weird and disheartening. Um, and you're, they call it awarded, which I feel like is a terrible term because it's like, congratulations, you get to work is a, is a weird thing. And then you get to make it. And original, it's my own, you know, I, the process is usually assembling artwork in a deck, sometimes the animation test, and then talking to people and trying to get money uh, together to hire people to help. Um, it really, nothing really changes from art school to the professional world as far as what making a film is. It's gathering a bunch of people and getting their time to help make something. Um, and that time, on a big, in a big sense, is kind of represented by the money. Uh, and lately, there's this weird fourth category uh, where I'm just paid to explore, which is like my favorite thing ever. I've found a, a weird niche, a, a niche of um, being able to do kind of paid experience, experiments for studios too on the side, and it's been super cool. Um, but ultimately, directing a career is kind of spinning plates, balancing act. Most of the stuff doesn't pay until it's greenlit. So I'm doing a lot of you know, juggling, uh, taking a commercial job, uh, pitching, getting artwork and pitch materials together, you know, balancing you know, life. And it's always just a, a little bit of a, of a um, play, original ideas against commissions, passion projects against uh, survival, art and money, and you know, love and heartbreak. Because the truth about all of it is if you don't really love, if you don't really love, uh, sorry, I clicked too fast. Um, dink, 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 you already saw this. There we go. If you don't, I've learned that you have to love every single thing you're doing because if you don't love it, you're not gonna do it well and it's gonna suck. Uh, but you know that like 90% of what you work on never gets seen by anybody. So. I, I really love that I kind of get to share a few of these like things that haven't been made uh, out there with you and maybe that kind of wills things into existence a little bit because Blender has become the center of tool of my pitching process and trying to get things made over the last couple of years. And I'll tell you how I got to that. So at the start of the pandemic, I, um, uh, I, I was directing a movie at Blue Sky and Disney and Fox had the merger, Blue Sky uh, was going down in flames, and most people in the movie were uh, removed, including, including me. And um, I, we decided to move back from the East Coast to Los Angeles, moved in with our in-laws while we were looking for a house, and my father-in-law wanted to paint an Adirondack chair in the, in the front yard, and I, I'm like, you know, I heard Blender's 2.8 is cool, and maybe I'll be able to try. I've tried Blender before, I never really hooked in. 2.8, I hooked in, and I, I know that that was the plan, I think, with the interface stuff, but it was great. And I, uh, I mocked up their Adirondack chair. Um, silly, but it got me uh, into it. And then um, and I started seeing these people doing like AR kit experiments and like puppet things. So I was like, I'm gonna, you know, all these calls are on Zoom. Wouldn't it be so much fun to, um, join calls as an animated character. So I made a little AR kit puppet in Blender and did like a little rear projection trick, you know, with a video in the background and some lighting effects uh, to join Zoom calls as this guy in the car or an alien in the uh, Smithsonian's downloadable um, Apollo 11 capsule. And um, this is all able to happen in real time. I was just kind of grabbing a version of the screen and putting it into my Zoom calls. And EV was a real revelation to me because I've always hated the fact that like when you're animating, it doesn't look anything like the final and you, you're really missing a lot of the emotion and a lot of the, um, the understanding of a shot when you don't see lighting in real time. And the ability to do this was something I always wanted and to be able to animate and see things in real time like that really easily and in a way that I really connected with was great. So what Blender has become is this little hub where I use it to create pitch arc work. I use it to work out and prove new pipeline ideas because often I'm trying to do something a little differently and the studios are like, what are you talking about? That's crazy and you have to like prove it. Um, and then last year I did some live action and I was really nervous about that. So I used it to block in and pre-plan lighting and shot ideas. So I knew when I was got to the location what I wanted. And then I also, um, do a bunch of weird crazy shit that gets people excited about 
funding a project. So I'll go through each of those really quickly. This is a, um, an example of how I, how I, what I do for the pitch art work. I usually kind of drop in a bunch of, you know, bad looking, simple models uh, really quickly. And then I will paint over that and procreate to sell the look of a particular show. Um, I've done this for many projects in development. Most of them don't ever get uh, made at all. But uh, the neat thing is that once you're already, already in 3D, it's a short step to actually getting something that um, it animates. And I did a project for HBO uh, last year, uh, this QAnon thing, really small thing. And part of my payment was uh, that they bought me a Rococo suit because I couldn't have done it any faster. So uh, now I use that suit, though, to kind of get a, an early blocking step. And I feel like I do have an advantage because I'm a keyframe animator, so I use it as a start, and then I polish it and make it better. But it gets me there really quickly. Um, it also, people think that it's my like wetsuit and it's cool in my garage in California, and I just don't tell them that I'm not a surfer and then it's a motion capture suit. Uh. <laughs> and then also, I, I've been proving out some pipelines and workflows that are really interesting. One of the things that came from this, uh, you know, playing around with AR kit, I was like, I, I really wish I could do this with other actors and have like more people in the car. And I couldn't do that uh, at all. And this little demo that I made in Blender got the funding from uh, Epic to make a tool called Future Stage, which is a thing that allows us to motion capture an entire Zoom call of people, essentially, and beam them all into an Unreal session in real time. So you can do an improv show. It's about two seconds delayed from reality but it's so much fun because you can be in there directing and uh, you know, there's AJ if anybody knows him, yep. uh, former Pixar guy. And then it's all beamed into a stage and you can kind of trigger animation and stuff. And we did all the animation and uh, building here in Blender, but the actual real time stuff isn't unreal. I can't wait for the, the version of Blender that has like simulation or a clock, I think, something uh, live because that will, um, make some of the stuff possible entirely in Blender, which is cool. Um, and then uh, pre -vis and post -vis for live action. So uh, last summer, I got to direct this special with Robert Rodriguez on Disney+. Plus. Um, we, I got the call from my studio, Nexus, my um, advertising studio, about three months before the project needed to be on the air. Uh, Billie Eilish wanted a, um, like a, uh, uh, Rotoscope's kind of Jessica Rabbit sort of vibe in three months on real locations in Los Angeles. And then we were going to do an entire show at a venue called the Hollywood Bowl, which is a classic Los Angeles 18,000 seat arena. It was going to be empty. And the Los Angeles Philharmonic would be there. And we want to have animated interstitials in between every song that she sang live. And I, um, I've never done anything like this. In th I mean, there isn't a lot like this, so whatever. But like, this was a daunting thing to get involved in. So I started, we started thinking about, this is Rob Ruppel's amazing artwork inspiring how to graphically represent Los Angeles. Uh, challenges here are, um, you know, motion capture, Billy had three hours total. So we couldn't do real ro rotoscope. You know, I was gonna get three hours with her. So we figured we'd motion capture her in locations, but we had to shoot the plates first, the backgrounds for the motion capture first. And we only had six weeks between the live concert to delivering the thing and three weeks from the concert shoot to lock and edit. And obviously this is gonna be crazy. So it ended up being five editors and three VFX teams in London, Los Angeles, and Sydney at 24 hours a day working on this. Individual studios never worked a lot of extra time, but, we, but I never slept. Um, and I had never done live action before, so I, I, I tried to do all that I could, boarding, like planning, like thinking of, I, I went to the, scouted these locations and like polycam scanned them. I wanted to have reference of all of that, um, you know, built 3D models of the Porsche, of the um, James Dean car here that we were using. And um, basically what I ended up doing is uh, from those 3D scans and measurements and some Google Maps data, I, I pre as much as I possibly could before shooting the mocap with Billy. And this allowed, this is like the actual cemetery graves that we were using in real space. And this is all just for me to have confidence that when I go to the set, I can show people some of these videos. This is what I'm looking for. Because I'm an animator and a control freak, and I didn't want to have, leave anything you know, unturned. And it ended up being um, a really, I mean, I don't think a lot of the people on the sets, especially for music videos, had ever seen this sort of planning. 
and it kind of blew their minds that this was a thing that people could even do. And it's all possible because Blender's so accessible and um, kind of usable in a, in a simple way to get these things done. And then uh, the other side of it was after the shoot, we, um, we had live plates and we had all this motion capture of, of Billy herself. And I ended up using uh, Blender to match the cameras in these scenes and basically post-vis with that mocap FBX character, all of the spots where we would need to have her in the show. So you'll see a couple of these things as they come on in a second where it's just the rough version of the character blocked in. And what it is is me kind of choosing the proper parts of the motion capture data that will end up being cleaned up by dropping them into um, Blender plates. And it has a lot of, um, you know, I leave notes to the editors and everything on the screen because I'm never sure if I'm going to talk to anybody or if they'll be in another time zone. So it's always good to be as clear as possible. And we blocked in the entire show this way, you know, about 10 minutes of animation and mocap and an hour uh, long actual show. Um, one other version of it that was pretty neat is I was actually able to use some of those polycam um, things for real as almost actual plates and get these little handheld things. If it's blurry enough, some of those, some of those 3D scans work, work wonderfully. And um, this is me just kind of basically being an editor in 3D with the mocap data and the video there. And it was pretty amazing to work that way because then I could just send it off to the, uh, the other animators um, and, and get them to um, polish it up. This is what it kind of ended up looking like. So it's, it's got a um, tune shade thing, kind of doing a Ralph Bakshi Cool World vibe. But you know, for three months, I'm pretty excited about how it turned out. It was a, a breakneck pace. And that was done with a lot of collaborators. So I have to thank some of them with Nexus. Robertino Zambrano is another director there that did a cool section in the middle. Pablo, uh, the DP, Kerry, the uh, live action director for the, the show, and then Robert Rodriguez for uh, being an awesome mentor for the whole thing. And, uh, and then I do a little bit of this crazy shit, so I'm going to end with this. I, like last year, this really famous writer that I can't mention who's really funny uh, saw some stuff I was doing, and we made, we, we uh, attempted to make a uh, weekly uh, political sketch show using Blender. And uh, financial things didn't quite line up to make that possible, and the world went into lockdown. Um, <laughs> But you know what? It was really fun to pretend to be Mark Meadows and, and Trump and, um, and, George, and uh, what's his name? And Pence. Um, and uh, this is me literally like using like VR controllers to puppet hands. Like it's, it's a very simple thing, but I think it looks kind of neat. And uh, applause to the Clado shaders that, uh, that um, were for this demo here. Another really cool thing is uh, I, I've gotten into making uh, an immersive theater project um, where uh, I chase these ideas that I think are interesting and I thought how cool would it be to, um, to have like live mocap actors in one building and a flashlight that's a VR projector and, and cast shadows of ghosts in a, in a building and I built the demo that has been used to finance the project uh, using, using that uh, blender just showing people what it, what it possibly looks like. So, um, you know, directing really is this uh, willing this kind of vision into something that is shared, you know, something in your head. And for me, Blender is like a huge part of getting those initial visual steps. And it's this thing that finally I feel like uses all these weird talents I have of, you know, I'm a, I'm a campfire guitarist, did a lot of these things. You know, I can be good enough to like play a tune, I can kind of draw, I can, I can animate, I can kind of light, but Blender is enough to like build a pretty confident and inspiring looking thing. Um, right now, I, I just did, I did a Love Death Robots last year. Um, I'm doing more next year. And um, I'm boarding them with, with grease pencil, which is awesome. And uh, that's, that's it. Uh, thanks, everyone. With 30 seconds to spare, thank you. <laughs>